Dear viewers, now we come to the second session of our ITB virtual convention today. I now hand over to Charlotte Lamb Davis, who will moderate this session. Charlotte is the founder of A Bright Approach, which is a London based cutting edge management consultancy firm. Charlotte, please. Hi, thank you very much, Roland. Thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody who's joining us for this particular session, and welcome back to those who were with us uh, over the last hour. I am uh, delighted to uh, be moderating this particular session, and uh, I'm especially excited to introduce our uh, guest speaker, which is uh, Mr. Christophe Garnier, and uh, there he is. Uh, Mr. Christophe is indeed the president of the FDR, VDR, the German Business Travel Association, and Christoph is an expert in his field, and he will share some of his uh, observations with us over the course of the next uh, 20 minutes, and he will also be sharing, I believe, uh, a bit of exclusive research with us today, which we are, are looking forward to, uh, to viewing. Um, before I hand over to Christoph, it's important that we get our second poll uh, off the ground. We ask you, and I think we should be able to see this, I will also myself go uh, to our website, you should be able to see the poll uh, on, the, uh, on the website at the moment. And indeed, the question is, when do you estimate that business travel volumes will return to pre-COVID levels? And you have a few options, so let us know which statement you do agree with. Option one, in 2021 or 2022. Option two, 2023 or 2024. Or option three, in or after 2025. And last, your option number four is never. Now I'm going to leave it to our technical team to try and see if we can get the poll results up before I hand over. OK, so uh, I'm very glad that you didn't all land on never. That option four was a bit of a scary, a scary um, answer. Um, you are more optimistic than I expected. Um, I am normally a great optimist myself, um, and uh, I think as the final details come in on this poll, it stays relatively, yeah, it stays relatively stable. We are very much hoping that by 2023, in this group of people is very much hoping by 23, 24, we'll be back uh, to where we were pre-COVID. Uh, now, I think we should hear what Christoph has to say at this particular point. He may disagree or agree, uh, but very much we are looking forward to what you have to say. I should always mention to the audience that you can put your questions in as and when you uh, think of them. And uh, Christoph has promised that he will make time for a Q&A after he's done his presentation. So uh, Christoph, uh, over to you, please. Thanks, Charlotte, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, well, it's at least good to hear that we are here in a quite optimistic group that uh, business travel will come back um, let's say more or less um, soon. So what's what's the current situation and uh, how is uh, the, the companies or the, co the corporations currently dealing with the situation? Is business travel currently um, possible to... Um, I think I missed the camera so now... Yeah, I have to do this. So this is a live demo with uh, which what is happening. Um, uh, during live sessions, but now it's working. So is business travel uh, possible? Uh, yes, of course it is. So um, some weeks ago I started my first business trip, I mean not a big one, uh, just going to Berlin, And uh, but, but I was really interested to see how is it working at the airport. So of course it was more quiet uh, as usual in, in, in summertime. Um, was Everything was absolutely well organized. People keep distance. Um, except in one moment. Maybe you know when you are waiting at the gate and the lady at the gate is taking the microphone. She didn't say anything, she's just breathing into the mic and all the people um, jump up and start queuing extremely closely um, to get obviously a better seat in the plane. But 
Okay, that's so it's everybody, everybody's um, hand to stay away or to keep the distance. And I, I think airports and um, also the, the airlines are are well prepared. Uh, it seems to me uh, well organized. Also these days, I'm, I'm I'm back in Berlin again, so for me it's it's again the usual stuff, and nothing where I have an issue with. So, but what is the importance of business travel? The, uh, the German Business Travel Association is doing every year um, a survey and we create a business travel report since many, many years. Um, and the report from 2019 shows that the German based company is spending around 53.5 billion euros a year for business travel. So this is for me a clear sign what the impact of the business travel um, for the whole let's say transportation or travel industry is yeah? not only um, the airlines, not only train um, and hotel, it's it's many more. It's also the restaurants and everybody who has a benefit out of it, limousine service, taxi, everything what comes on top. Saying this, it's also clear for me. <clears throat> so this is something which will not disappear out of a sudden, because sometimes when I read some articles uh, where people are saying, um, business travel will disappear in the future. Um, it, it makes me sometimes a little bit angry. Of course, I understand that it's on one hand, it's a cost package for the companies, um, but you, you cannot really um, replace the business travel. So <clears throat> I think getting back to business means also getting back to business travel. Yeah, because um, I mean, we everybody saw what was happening. When nothing moves forward, nobody was allowed to travel. It seems that there is a little bit of stop in the in different industry. Okay, some industries maybe have an advantage um, out of it, um, but the majority of the companies are suffering from the current situation. And uh, also the, the feedback we are getting is that now people are looking forward to restart business travel, uh, to meet customers, uh, to bring together, together uh, project groups, and, and start start working on, on on some some projects and whatever. And also, there is an interesting industry study, by the way, um, from the Cambridge University. Knowledge diffusion in the net in the network of international business travel. Um, this was quite an interesting study, I have to say, because um, when when going through this, um, it does not only refers to the money is spent while on business trip. It's also what is the outcome of such a business trip, which it's quite interesting because also um, many information, a lot of knowledge is transferred to others during a business trip. Things which are not written on PowerPoints or other presentations, um, some information which is shared in the personal discussion um, while you are meeting with your people. So what was the change in the travel management over the past? So in the in the past, everybody was looking for um, to reduce travel costs. I think this is something you see usually every every year uh, where people are focused on uh, reducing travel costs or maybe uh, maintaining uh, what kind of travel costs you have or um, looking forward not to have increased um, costs also. Uh, interestingly, uh, still one of the things is that the companies have to deal with that people stay in line with the travel policy. Um, also to get more or the best support you can get for your travelers that they feel also comfortable in in case of disruption or emergency, they get help and also um, which is also not a surprise working on the end to end process means making the whole process as smart as possible, starting from uh, planning a trip, booking a trip, and also until the travel expenses go. So, what, how has what has changed now after um, the the COVID crisis? So, at the moment, um, the travel managers have to see what kind of trips are anyhow able to uh, to conduct. Um, also, what needs to be done? How should the travelers be equipped and protected? And uh, also finding other options or solutions uh, like 
online tools, web meetings, whatever comes in. Of course, it's usually part of the IT um, departments and the companies. The feeling is it took some while until they get adapted to it. Some of the companies were extremely well um, prepared for the um, for the, when the situation changed, they have already some of the tools, meeting tools available, online tools. Um, but for some, it took some while. Uh, I think especially the bandwidth was some of the issues they have to, to live with. On top of this, we are doing every uh, week, we sent out a survey to see what is the feedback from our clients from our members in the in the VDR um, and also what will be the focus during the corona crisis as well and what will happen afterwards. <clears throat> so the feedback was that the companies are really keen on looking into is the business trip really necessary as before. Um, be before there was maybe also an automated uh, workflow that it, or an automated approval workflow. If somebody is planning a trip, it, it easily goes through. Now, people are really looking into it. Is this something what is really business critical? And uh, so you see here the gray um, bar shows what happens in or what was the result in April. And now when we are talking about September, they're so even looking more into it, um, where um, it's, it's more important to look, isn't the trip really necessary? But of course, one of the facts is that the situation has not so much changed or not eased in a way we wanted to see it. You know? Also, there is a stronger focus on the travel risk. Um, I would not say this is, is new to the companies, but um, usually you have one incident and the incident uh, after an incident was over, you turn back to, let's say, more or less normal. But now we have something which is continuing and we have to deal with this. Yeah? Also, the rising costs for the business travel, where people see in April, um, I mean, it was already 66%, now in September, 76 because some of the, um, I mean, there are not so many routes available. If I look into the airline sector, uh, so it, maybe you have to, to connect somewhere else. In, in some countries, it's absolutely not, not possible or uh, it's quite difficult to get there. And this comes all with increasing costs. Also, um, I mean, bankruptcy of some service providers, it's also, it's, um, I think this was already um, predicted early, that so this might going to happen. The longer it takes, um, the more probably this will happen. Um, and uh, also some expect that we will see a greater um, bureaucratic effort when going on a trip, preparing for a trip. And um, but it's, the, it's also internally as well as, as externally, if you have uh, to provide maybe a negative testing results or something which has to be taken on short notice, so these are all things which comes on top while going on um, on a travel. Um, also, we see that there was a, a strong, um, yeah, the, the people act quite um, uh, uh, <clears throat> the people act quite um, uh, strict when handling travel uh, travel exceptions. Um, this was a little bit more moderate when it starts, but it's uh, it's getting now a little bit lower. But anyhow, there is not so much you can travel to. So there are new challenges now for companies and also um, how to pre prepare. I think um, there are now several things which needs to be prepared or people are, are thinking about. What about a approval process? If you don't have an approval process in place or just a, maybe, an, let's say, an information workflow, maybe you think about now to have an active approval in the future again. So I'm not sure if this is the, the right one, um, but however, this is something people are thinking about. You know? uh, currently, we have to deal with a really exceptional situation, but also what is an exceptional trip means. 
is the trip really necessary? Then we have something, risk groups, maybe people who have already some health um, risks, are they allowed to go on a business trip? Should they go on a business trip? And also what comes with it? What about personal data security in, in, in this um, in this combination? Is this something the traveler has to share or the employee has to share with the company that he has a, or she has a risk? Um, quite interesting. Also insurance, what is covered and not only uh, when we're talking about personal risk, also when we are talking about cancelling um, a trip, what is covered and what not. And then you have also um, to look into the current situation really on a, on a daily basis. Yeah, because it is really the situation is changing. This is nothing where you can say, OK, it's like the actual status is going on for a couple of weeks. You really have to deal with um, also country specific uh, requirements. We have to do so completely um, new situation. At least to manage this on almost every day. So what are we, what are our requirements, by the way, or what are we expecting from from the authorities and from the from the government? Um, because if you have to deal with uh, completely different rules and regulations, I think the the business traveler and the, the travel management companies will be a little bit confused. Yeah. So we try to have at least an um, an, an EU wide approach that we can rely on some, let's say, guidelines where we can to deal with. Also that we have some regulations um, which are valid for many areas. And also, by the way, getting clear recommendations and information, maybe also a website. Also, maybe just some reg regional um, bands and not uh, blocking a, a full country to make the whole situation a little bit more um, that people can at least work and plan on on the business trips for the business trips anyhow they are planned a little bit on or far away on short notice um, as before uh, as, as private trips uh, so i think the uh, the companies are a little bit more flexible and and by the way i think this is also one of the challenges we have to deal with anyhow so as you or well, we all currently see, there is not really the chance um, to plan a long time ahead. This means when you go on a business trip, you need to be flexible. Anyhow, you need to find flexible solutions. Also, some of the providers have react already in terms of cancellation or changing policies uh, that you, you are able to really do your changes without any um, additional costs with any with any fees. And then in, in the poll we are doing with um, from our members, we are asking uh, always. How do you see the future of business travel? What is your expectation and how long, how long will it take? Yeah, <clears throat> so this is uh, therefore interesting as we had the same uh, poll just um, uh, before we start here with our session today. Uh, so, of, of course, I mean, everybody uh, is, is waiting um, until the restrictions will be lifted and after, what, um, after the bans have lifted, what's going uh, to happen? So you see also that we have a change from over the last three months, so that the September is already the last figures from the last poll we took last, last week. Um, so people think that still until the end of the year we have to deal with uh, restrictions, but short term after um, it has been lifted, people will come back to business travel. And also um, a lot of people think until the first quarter uh, 2021 we have to deal with it. And um, it's not so many we're saying beyond first quarter. So this is, um, I think, quite an interesting number, but also um, an interesting question was, what do you think is the reduction in travel spent in the in the future? As you can see, the majority of our members uh, mentioned the decrease is up to 30 percent. OK, but there's a huge gap. I mean, we have you have the options between 10 
or 30. So this could be, if we take the average, maybe it's 20, 20% 20 um, what people are expecting will uh, be outcome of this situation or of this COVID crisis. That these are, this is the number the, uh, the companies will, will have as a saving in the future when we come back to a normal business travel. So these were the latest polls from um, from our surveys we do every week. And um, yeah, that's all from my side so far. And um, I'm looking forward for your question now. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Christoph. Some very, very interesting uh, details in there. I, I said we have a couple of questions uh, from the floor, the virtual floor already. Um, I think actually I had a very similar question myself. I'm quite interested in, in trying to understand which companies or industry sectors do we feel might be resuming business travel first? I mean, is there already some sort of level of uh, indication as to which business sectors are off traveling on business already? Yeah. Uh, well, but <clears throat> I think this is just a um, uh, best guess. I would not say about what what kind of sector is is traveling. It's more um, the departments who will travel first. And I think everything what is customer facing. This is my expectation. This is uh, these are one of the department which which start worse. And I think uh, first. And I think all the companies have their own need requirements um, where they need to start with. So this is most probably that. And also, if you are working in, I mean, we are working in a, in a global economy. Yeah? I mean, if you have international teams you have to deal with, um, then of course, uh, you have to, to meet them again. Uh, you have to, to rework on the, on the projects. Maybe you have also in the meantime, you have some new team members yeah? because there was some, some change. Um, people stop working, move to a different job or um, uh, now uh, allocated to a different project. So this is my, 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 my guess that this is something which will start first. The internal travel, which is, I think, also quite um, heavy, uh, but I think this is something which maybe start a little bit later. I think it's interesting. So there's 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 an HR argument in here as well. You know, it is it is of course uh, very much related to how you strengthen your own business. In that you actually need to see your own employers, particularly for those global companies out there. So that could be the the soft, if you like, the soft sort of getting back into 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 the uh, into business travel. I would would uh, there, there there is another couple of questions, and I will take another one here. I mean, we spoke um, a little bit about the, the estimated timelines on this. I mean, there there are some companies that are going to, well, as as we can see in the polls, some companies are not going to be sending their people out to, to travel again, are they? I mean, do you want to elaborate a little bit on that because it's an interesting thing? To actually, uh, what we have found out over the last uh, six six months is that some companies are now saying we probably did do too much business travel. To be a little bit provocative, um, what are we? What are you? What are your thoughts on that? And do you think this is short term? <laughs> um, I think if you ask the the travel managers in the different companies, and um, also would would ask them before the COVID crisis. Does your company travel too much? I would say 90% would say yes. OK, because um, <clears throat> I, I think the majority of the business trips also just to make this clear is absolutely valid and there must be a business reason. OK, absolutely. Maybe 80% uh, for sure. Uh, there's are there maybe a few people traveling uh, just because they life like traveling? Uh, it could be, yes, um, but however, there is a business reason behind usually, otherwise you don't go um, on a business trip. And also everybody knows um, the more you have to be on a business trip, uh, the less fun you have um, because traveling is, is really something which is stress to your body. And also the campaign we were starting in the VDR for 2020 was um, to have a more balanced approach in, in regard to the necessity of a business trip and also protecting our environment. 
Mm. Um, so this is also one of the, the learnings I think we, we had. So in the, in the past, if you have asked the business travelers, would you be able to, to shift some of your business travel to online meetings? A lot of people said immediately, no, this is absolutely not possible. Yeah. Now they were forced to use all these kind of digital solutions. Maybe the one or the other now find, found out, oh, that's interesting. That's, that's working better than I had expected. And this will help a little bit. And I think this is also the, the right approach yeah, in, in the future, that we balance out what is really necessary, where do I need to go on a business trip, or also, can I reduce the number or the frequency of my trips a little yeah. bit? Is there really a need that I see my, my team in the US, in the UK, in France um, every month? Or is it is it OK if they see me um, every uh, four to six months? So I think this is a good learning. Yeah. And, and I think that 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 maybe in that respect we can say that 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 COVID at least taught us a little bit um, a certain discipline, maybe to rethink a certain discipline around the way that we travel, and maybe both from a business and a, and a, and a leisure perspective. Um, I would like to just touch on uh, on technology a tiny little bit because it's one of my my favorite areas. And I'm 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 kind of working with a number of customer and uh, with a number of clients who who develop contactless uh, technology, sort of particularly for the hospitality sector. Now, do you feel that the hospitality sector itself is adapting, you know, to these technology fast enough? Because I really see that this will create a sense of. Um, a sense of safety, certainly, um, amongst, you know, the business travelers. Is it something that you might have an opinion about the technology side that will that will get us back out on the road again? I, I think this is quite new for, for everyone. And also the, the whole hospitality is on one hand hit at heart by this crisis and also doing investments at the same time. Um, it's it's really a challenge. Yeah. And it, and also, what does it mean, contact, contactless? So, if if I can, if I see, um, for example, when I'm in in a hotel currently, yeah, you see everywhere, and even if it is just, um, if it not looks professional, but at least you can see that you have to keep the distance a little bit. There are clear yes. rules, um, what to do, how to protect you. Find everywhere hand sanitizers. So I think they say really did quite a lot and and also some of the technology um, I mean contactless could be also when we are looking into the meetings yeah. which is also an, an interesting area uh, because the, the meetings were really hit at heart and yeah. uh, so so some of the companies already starting to do hybrid meetings yeah so using some technology with, which was available already there are a lot of tools now uh, you you can use for this. I mean, uh, look for example, our session today looks uh, it works well. So we can also meet somewhere. Some people can meet physically, and the others can join um, virtually. So I think this this also will will help to to keep the dis the distance as long as we do not have uh, a proper treatment of vaccination. Absolutely. I unfortunately I think uh, the half an hour is nearly off. Uh, you know, up, Christoph. I mean, I would have loved to have another half an hour, but really? not not for today. <laughs> not for today, I'm afraid. Um, I would uh, like to say that I know that Christoph is, uh, is 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 very much somebody that you can approach. And if you, any of you, on this session today have something that you are burning to ask him about. I'm sure he would he would take a question uh, from you on on one of our social media platforms where you can also find him. I hope uh, that's very OK to mention that, Christoph. It's been an absolute pleasure. I wish we'd had a little bit more time. I expect with contact less, you know, we're talking a lot about moving um, a, a lot of things onto our um, our mobile phones as well. So, you know, that's a way to actually enable us to only touch one thing as we enter hotels. And Allow me. Uh, yeah. Allow me one comment finally, because when we are all talking about um, coming back to business travel and how uh, will the future look like, uh, it's quite interesting. We have so many experts, obviously, in, in regard to pandemic situations. I have to say this is my first one. So um, yeah. uh, I would not say um, that I'm an expert on it, but I think we have others. We had other situations in the past where people were saying, Travel will not return as it was before, and completely the opposite was always the case. 
I think it will it will take some time, but we will come back to a more normal situation because business travel brings absolutely value to all of the business. On that note, I thank you again very much for joining us today, ITP Virtual Convention. We hope to see you uh, and at one of these uh, again in the future. Thank you very much for, for coming on board. And uh, I am going to hand over to Roland for our last session of the day. Uh, there may be just a, a short little break uh, uh, of a couple of minutes, or we may indeed be able to go straight live to the last session. From me, thank you very much. Enjoy the last half an hour. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.